Hello and welcome to Mr. Barlow's physics classroom. Today we're going to be talking about momentum. So very basically, momentum is any object that has a velocity. So the definition, or the equation, is that P equals MV. So P stands for momentum. And we measure momentum in kilogram meters per second. Then M stands for our mass, and we measure it in kilograms. And the V stands for velocity in meters per second. So it's pretty straightforward. Anything with a mass and a velocity is going to have a momentum. So there, but there are certain ways um, beyond this that we can talk about momentum. And the most common is in collisions. So when we talk about momentum, we talk about things colliding. So when two things collide, they can do it one of two ways. You can either collide elastically, have an elastic collision, or an inelastic collision. Very basically, elastic collisions mean things bounced, and an inelastic collision means they stuck together. So if you have an elastic collision, Things have bounced off each other. Um, you could think of this like bumper cars or bumper boats. Um, basically, an ice getting hit with an ice ball. Anything where they don't stick together. An inelastic collision, you could think of like tackling someone in a football game or um, being hit with a snowball as opposed to the ice ball that crumbles onto you. Um, when Two cars hit very often, it's an inelastic collision, they sort of stick together and move. So you've got these two ways that things can collide. So we have, these are special ways you can think of momentum in terms of colliding. And so there's some equations that go with this. Um, for elastic collisions, it would look something like this. And so in the blue here is my elastic collision equation. It looks like a lot. Really all this is, if you want to boil it down, is the momentum that the first car had plus the momentum the second car had is going to be the same as what they both have afterwards. So the combined momentums will be the same before and after. If that sounds familiar, with a one word out of place, it should. We just finished talking about the conservation of energy, now we're looking at conservation of momentum. So momentum, much like energy, is conserved. Whatever momentum I start with, I also end with. So these two cars have momentum, at the end, we're going to have the same combined momentum. Even if one stops, they're both moving just like bumper cars, you're both moving, and afterwards, one of you has stopped moving, the other one is continuing to move, there is still the same momentum. So an elastic collision is actually the more violent of the two. You have much more uh, possibility for whiplash or severe injury in an elastic collision. The general idea is that most of, most of these collisions, there is a complete transfer of momentum. So just like the magnets in the cars that we've been using, if the momentum from cart one comes in, they hit cart two, cart one will stop, and cart two will immediately start moving. There's a great deal of acceleration that's associated with that increase in velocity. Inelastic collisions, on the other hand, behave somewhat differently. So inelastic collisions, the equation looks like this. It starts out very similarly, and then we change here. If you stick together at the end, you had, again, you start out the same way, the momentum of car one plus the momentum of car two. And now here's our, our thing, they're, they're not separate anymore, they have become one thing. So this is now the momentum combined of both of them. It's what we end up with. So now instead of huge accelerations for car two when it gets hit, they stick together and their velocity ends up being lower. 
So the velocity change in an inelastic collision is much lower than an elastic collision because the mass went up. This is due to the conservation of momentum. When momentum gets conserved, the total doesn't change. So if I've increased my mass, I must have decreased the velocity that they were moving at. So we have our two types of collisions, inelastic and elastic. We also can look at this a different way. When you have a change in momentum, so individual, uh, if you have a car accident with two cars, the individual cars will feel a change in momentum. Together, there is no change, everything is conserved, but individually, you're gonna feel a difference. So if I looked at just one of the cars, I said, what is their change in momentum? Well, their change in momentum is the same as this formula for something called impulse. When you feel a change in momentum, you feel an impulse. It's a force spread over an amount of time. And this is basically the idea behind every car manufacturer's safety equipment. So whether it is crumple zones, or seat belts, or airbags, all of these go right back to this idea. If you start looking at the equation, if I'm gonna to come to a stop, let's say that I'm driving and I hit a tree. I'm going to come to a stop. I, as a car and as a person, I'm going to have all my momentum go to zero. That's gonna be based on the force that's applied to me and the amount of time that force is applied. So if you're looking at this and you know that this number can't change, I'm going, to change, I'm going to have zero momentum when I finish. So if I had 500 kilogram meters per second of momentum to start with, I'm gonna have zero at the end. My change has gotta be 500. I need to lose it all. But you can split it up and you can make 500 different ways. 500 newtons could take one second. 250 newtons over two seconds. So car companies have put these features in because they know if you get into an accident, you're going to just, your change of momentum is a fixed number. You are going to come to a stop, you're gonna have no momentum left when you're done. The goal is to achieve this number by having the highest number here that I possibly can. If my time that it takes me to stop is really high, that means my force must be really low. And this is what kills you. If you hit a tree and you're driving a cast iron car, you're probably not going to make it because this force is going to be so high. Modern cars with all of these, these safety features, they're trying to raise the amount of time it takes you to stop. This is a very important part of momentum and impulse and the relationship between them. It's very, very important that you understand that the force, the higher the force, the less amount of time that it would take to stop you. But we want this to be high for things like a car, or a bike, or a, when you wear a helmet. Um, if you're running a race, you wouldn't immediately stop through the finish line because it puts a lot of force on your body and makes it difficult. The opposite is true when you're building a golf club or a baseball bat. You want to put as much force as possible to change the momentum. You wanna have as little time in contact as you can so that you can put so much force on it and hit it further. So whether it's a golf club, a baseball bat, um, anything that is where the point is to get something to go a long way. If you're kicking a soccer ball, you want the force to be really high over a short amount of time. If you think of the most or the biggest hits in a football game, they're not usually ones that take a long time to bring the, the ball carrier down. They are short, but there's a lot of force involved. That momentum change there's a force and a change in time, and basically it's decided which one is gonna be larger and how you're going to extend this to lower the force or how you're gonna lower the amount of time in contact to raise the force. Um, anytime you have a change in momentum, it is an impulse. So as you start to build your egg drop projects, this is the key. 
This is the key thing that you want to keep in mind. Cars have crumple zones, they have seat belts, they have airbags. What should you put in an egg drop project to make sure that you are raising the amount of time it takes for your egg to stop? Because if the force is high, the egg's going to break. So thank you for watching. This has been Momentum in Mr. Vellis Physics Classroom. Have a great night.